Last time we were working on these kickstands and I think this time we're going to take a look at where the instrumentation or the seeing eyes for this machine will go. So I'm just going to turn on lines so we can see the geometry we're dealing with. And let's start by thinking about what it would look like. I think that because we already have this sort of insect-like look, it might be interesting to have an arced uh, set of eyes, LiDAR and such. So, where is that doodle tool? Oh, I lost it. There we go. So probably something like uh, like an arc of instruments around the front, sort of facing out like that. And from the side, maybe we've got color mounting brackets coming down like that. Can have maybe an infrared camera down here, and then that same arc I just drew would wrap around the front. I think that would definitely poise the front of the machine to say that it means business. So let's start with the bracket. If we just take a cube, my favorite starting point, and scale it down. Now I know that I won't need to edit this cube as a cube anymore, so I'm just going to make it editable. And let's move some of these points back. They can just intersect the other geometry for now. We don't care too much about it yet. So got a cube parallel there and this is just going to be the mountain the mounting bracket and selecting this front face we can drag it out like that and then down here. And my hope is that this won't be in the way when we operate the steering. So if we take a quick look at the um, forward-looking infrared reference images I have, we can see that we have this sort of ball. I think that would be a pretty scary look for this machine, especially since it would be a component that's actually capable of sort of turning its head and looking at you, sort of on these servos. So it sort of has a cylindrical base and there's going to be motors in there that stabilize and articulate this. But in essence it's a cylinder, another cylinder, and a sphere. So let's start off with those primitive objects and see where that gets us. All the while constructing this, I'm going to be testing the motion of the steering. So we can just orient this cylinder on its z-axis and shuffle it into place something like that I would like to play with angling it up so straight angles are never very appealing especially on a machine like this so I like to 
play with the angles a little bit. So angled up like that, it may still be just as effective, but maybe it'll give it a little more of a dynamic property. So I've got that first cylinder, we can just drag to copy it. Now we have a second cylinder. And if we flip back to the picture viewer, we can see that it's, it's a bit taller, quite narrower. So something like that. Maybe not so tall. We do want to be trying to miniaturize things to a certain degree. I mean, this is being mounted on a motorcycle and not a helicopter. I'm assuming that that device we just looked at is meant for a helicopter or a Humvee or something like that. So now we take a sphere. We can use our transfer shortcut to transfer it to that cylinder. And this is starting to look a little menacing. Maybe, maybe not. So the idea is that this could be sort of an infrared camera looking around, pivoting itself, almost like Wheatley from Portal 2. <laughs> it's actually funny now that I think about it. All right, let's leave that for now. I'm just going to group these. So this is going to be our flare proxy. The next step is that we're going to need some LiDAR. This is taking it really overboard, but this is the idea. We're going to need, I'll say, three units at a minimum. So, if we were to pretend our LiDAR units were just cubes, it would probably be something like that size. So we'd have one here. And if we group this, we can use that origin trick to put the origin back here. So this is now a null object with a cube in it and we can instance this null let's give it a name so we can instance it and then rotate it it looks like our origin needs to be much further away to get the effect I'm trying to do Maybe the center of the bike. So instance it. There we go. So it looks like 25 degrees positive. And negative. But this looks really huge and unwieldy and not very intimidating. And I think this is because they're too big. So if we move these guys down out of the way and I don't think my moving the origin trick is doing what I wanted it to do. So let's use a different technique. Let's move this back up to a manageable spot. And we're still going to instance it, but this time we're going to place the instance in a symmetry object. So if we put our symmetry object up top, 
and then we put our instance in there we can stagger it maybe they need to be inboard further back I'm sorry if you tuned in expecting some modeling as you can see I'm pretty much just brainstorming so one of these might need to look down a little bit more than the others okay I have a feeling that with our current setup the steering won't actually work just move it back that looks a little bit better this is definitely challenging Let's test the steering. We add the steering to the heads up display. And let's set it to show always. That way, we don't even need to have anything selected. We can test the steering. It's only getting in the way a little bit. These on the side, I'm, I'm happy that they have so much clearance. So we can move those in a little bit. Like that. Now this is turning out to be a part of the bike that's going to be difficult to make look cool. But perhaps we can cross that bridge when we get there. Just sort of roughing out where things would be. So these LiDAR units usually have sort of a curved front. We can make ours a little bit more squat. And then we can sort of just add some detail to the front. Not much, just a little bit. Start by just extruding this face out. Scaling it down on the X. just to give it a little bit of shape now these units are starting to look really huge scale them down we're going to need some brackets for these on the sides Let's reduce the resolution of the sphere. Don't know why, but that's bothering me. I feel like these ones on the side should be angled out a little bit, a little bit more. Again, there's probably a right place and a wrong place for these to live, but I don't know. I do know that 
they handle different sort of various fields of view and various dimensions. So one may be scanning vertically, one may be scanning horizontally, and then they sort of create a compound uh, a compound image based on what they're scanning. And I'm guessing that this orb, this infrared orb in front is going to want to be armored, but I'm not sure how we would do that. Again, we can probably cross that bridge when we get to it. So, starting to load more equipment on the machine. It's definitely looking less and less like a motorcycle every time we do that. And let's add a little bit more detail onto these LiDAR units. So I'm just going to scale it a little bit fatter. And take a quick look at the reference material. So it's almost a cylindrical piece inside of the casing. And it looks like it's at an angle, truncated sort of. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, so maybe more of a bias on top than on the bottom. Uh, what else have we got? Yep, it's more of a bias on top. Let's go with that. So the way we do this is using the trusty knife tool. Polygon mode, deselect everything, choose the knife tool. And in loop mode, we can just add a cut. That's where the top ends, that's where the bottom ends. And now we can add a third cut right here. What this is going to define is the the edge right back here. So right about there. Now we can do a cool trick. Well, no need for a cool trick. We can just delete these faces. So that's our LiDAR unit carved open. And again, I'm going to use the bridge tool in edge mode. Oop, got to select the tool. And then we can just use the close polygon hole tool up here, down there. I don't like how that's triangulating, so I can use the knife in line mode, only visible. And we can just cut these two faces so that they triangulate nicer, or quadrangulate rather. Now we can take a primitive cone. I think, I think the cone is the object that has the truncate option. Maybe I'm thinking of the cylinder. No, nope, top radius, bottom radius. So that's what we want. Uh, we can just transfer that object, scale it down. And the idea is that we can just give it one height segment, 16 rotation segments, no caps. And then we can adjust the top radius so that it's larger. Let me scale it down. And you can also interactively drag these handles. Make it a little bit taller. And bring it out front. So the construction of these sort of implies that the widest point is at the center. So that actually means we would push our axis back like that. Scale it up a little bit like that. Which means our housing needs to be a little bit wider. Like that. 
Now, if we place our cone inside of our lighter unit, all three get it. And we probably need to slice the cone too. Luckily, we can do that. So we can slice it. And it just opens and closes like a curtain. You can probably want to slice it from 0 to 180. So that way we only get the face, the, the, the front half. And that's our LiDAR unit. Or at least the beginning of it. So right away we can see that it's 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 too it's too front heavy because we have all this extra stuff hanging out. And we can fix that by just pushing it back a little bit. And again, to create some of that asymmetry, we can push the lower part back more. So we have a few LiDAR units, and we have our forward-looking infrared orb. Maybe what's bothering me about this is the orientation. If it were 90 degrees like that, and point it forward a little bit, maybe that would look better. Maybe. Okay. I think I'm going to save there. I think we can call that a session. Sort of roughing out the geometry. And the next time, maybe we can work on... Let's see. Maybe we can finally get to those arms that hold the swords. I've been avoiding those a little bit because they're quite challenging. But we are in a good position to get them done, I think. So, until next time, bye.